Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be another serious one. I know you guys are so sick of these. But I feel like I owe you guys an explanation. So I'm here to give it to you. Now, before I get into the video, I just want to say that this is going to be another video with another trigger warning. Um, so if things like suicide, depression, uh, mention of self-harm, stuff like that, uh, make you feel uncomfortable. I don't think it makes anyone feel comfortable, but if you don't want to listen to those topics, click off the video now because that's what this video is going to be about. So, I was gone for two weeks, for those of you that did not realize, and I was going to make this the first video that I made when I went back on YouTube, but I thought it was too soon. And I think now it's a good time to give you guys a little bit of an explanation on why I was gone for so long. Because usually I upload once, twice a week, or at least back when this happened I was. So here I am to tell you what happened. So just another heads up, I may joke throughout this video, but that's just because making light of situations like this is the way that I cope with things. So if I start joking about it, I am by no means trying to be disrespectful. I just, that's how I cope with things. So let's get into it. On May 29th, I believe, I made the decision to admit myself into a mental hospital. Now, this was not an easy decision by any means, but there were so many things piling up and I felt like it was the only way to get help. So I did it. And am I glad that I did it? Absolutely. If it was not for this experience, I may have ended up hurting myself because it was to the point where I was thinking about hurting myself like every single day. And that's not okay. That's not good. So I made the decision to just admit myself. My depression was really bad. My anxiety was really bad. I was at the point in quarantine where I was like, oh, like n literally nobody cares if I live or die. Nobody cares. And this is something I haven't told you guys, or at least most of you. Um, I was living with my friend Emmy for a while. I think most of you knew that. But the part that you don't know is that one night I got extremely drunk, like way drunker than I should have. And I almost jumped off of her balcony. That was the lowest I've been other than the day that I admitted myself this entire, like, quarantine. Because, honestly, I have not been doing well during this whole thing. Uh, I don't think anyone is, but now that things are starting to be lifted a little bit, I'm feeling a lot better. I've, I'm on new meds now, I'm going to therapy again, and I haven't been to therapy since December. So that's, like, a big deal to me because I was thinking about it. I was like, oh, like I should probably start going to therapy again. And then I admit myself, so. But it was a huge wake up call for me. Um, I kind of got to like stand back a little bit and look at how I was treating other people. And it was not well. Like I had to lash out at people because I was feeling so shitty. And that's not okay. Never use your mental illness to do that because it's not okay, and I'm admitting that. I was not being the best person during this quarantine at all. Like, I expected the world of people. I just was not being reasonable, and I realize that now. And I'm working every day now to make sure that I can be the best version of myself that I can possibly be. So, to everyone that I kind of treated badly during this quarantine I am so sorry like you didn't deserve that unless you did then <laughs> but most of the people definitely did not now I kind of want to talk more about my experience in the mental hospital itself because I feel like some of you may be wondering like what staying at one might be like so let's talk a little bit about that I'm gonna try not to use anyone's name unless like I want to praise them I got there on a Saturday, and it was a day after I had this really bad panic attack. I 
I was on the phone with my friend Cheyenne for like an hour, two hours that day because I did not know what to do and she kind of like talked me into it. A bunch of my friends talked me into it actually. They're just like, oh, like this can't possibly be like a negative experience. Like it, if you go, you'll either feel the same or you'll feel better. I was willing to take that chance. So I get there, my friend drops me off. She actually works at the hospital that she took me to. She said great things about it. So I was like, I'm just gonna go to this one because the one in my town apparently isn't that great. So I went and I instantly started bawling. Like I was just like, oh my God, like I'm terrified. Like I'm so scared, blah, blah, blah. And that was like the first time that day that I, like it hit me that I was gonna be staying in this hospital for a while, that I wouldn't be able to really talk to any of my friends. And I was just scared that it would make things even worse because like one of the reasons that I was admitting myself was because I was so lonely. But luckily there was a lot of great people there and I'm actually still talking to one of the people from the mental hospital. Uh, she was only there like two days, three days that I was there, and I was there for nine. So she wasn't there like the entire time I was, but she's the one person that actually cared enough to like come up to me when I was bawling in the social room. And she was just like, girl, like I'm giving you my number. I'm gonna check up on you like every single day. And for the most part, she kept that promise, but she also went back to work. So like, I don't blame her for not calling every day but she tried her best <laughs> and it really helped me to just feel like someone cared about me because that's something that I haven't felt or hadn't felt in a long ass time. Now, the only complaint that I have about this place is they did not do traditional therapy. You had to ask for it if you, like you had to go to one of the therapists and be like, yo, like I need to talk to someone. And me being extremely shy, I did not do that. I kind of wish I did, but obviously, like, I'm still a lot better than I was before. Um, but yeah, they did not have, like, scheduled, like, group therapy or scheduled therapy. Now, this may have just been the hospital I went to. I don't know if this is at every hospital, but the therapy that we did is every morning we would talk about our goals for the day and like how we slept and everything and then after that we would go outside for like an hour or so and there was nothing really to do outside that kind of sucked like i wish they had like a basketball hoop or something but uh whatever <laughs> just getting outside was nice i'll say that and then sometimes, they didn't even do this every day, but sometimes at the end of the day, we would talk about if we met our goals for the day and like how we felt throughout the day. But there was never just like, oh, like, hey, like, let's talk. Like, what's bothering you? Like, how can we make it better? There was nothing like that. And I went into it thinking that it would just be like a lot of therapy and I was kind of disappointed when there wasn't really any. To anyone that is thinking about or is in a place where they think that they might need to go to a mental hospital, I definitely recommend it. It helped me immensely. Like, I would go to bed at night and I would not want to wake up the next day. I, whether that be me being suicidal or me just not wanting to get out of bed or not wanting to do things. And now I'm more excited about life, as cheesy as that sounds, but it's true. I get out of bed every day and I'm just like, okay, like what can I accomplish today? Like, um, how can I make myself better today? Stuff like that. So, it's like a complete 180 is that the correct term i don't know i'm not good at math but complete difference is what i'm trying to say um i went from being extremely depressed and extremely anxious literally every single day to to barely feeling anxious and not feeling depressed at all like i have not been depressed since i was in the hospital and that's saying a lot. I got out of the hospital 
about a week and a half ago so I'm still feeling good <laughs> I just want to give a shout out to all the amazing staff at this hospital. You're probably not watching this, because if you are, um, hi. <laughs> it's me. I'm doing a lot better. I know I look a lot different out here. The staff. My lights are flickering. I'm so sorry. But thank you to the staff, especially the therapists that came in every day. Um, there was this one therapist in particular, I'm not gonna say his name, but we really clicked, and he actually gave me a lot of music to listen to, so look out for, like, maybe some reviews on my blog of those? I don't know. Um, I'm still trying to listen to all that, so thank you, you gave me a huge ass list, and I'm still conquering it. But I think that's gonna be it for this video. I thought I would have more to say, but I... head empty head empty. No thoughts, head empty. <laughs> I'm gonna go and I hope you guys will come back next week for another video. I'm going down to once a week again just because I don't want to burn myself out again so I hope that's okay but maybe one day in the future I will go back to two times a week but for now I just want to kind of take it easy and only post once a week. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.